Here we go. Go. <laughs> yeah, keep it going, man. <laughs> you know what's so cool? You got that red wall behind you, and you got Frank Sinatra. And so, you know, you got these, uh, and oftentimes people, they think about red. What does red mean, right? And so they have this, this thought, is it like, oh, is it is it okay? Like, is it, is it too bold? Uh-huh. Then we look at Frank Sinatra, and the guy's like, the guy is just into his art and he's just, he's loving it. So like, I love it. It's just this genre, just putting things up there. And so yeah, I love it. Yeah, dude. Uh, Frank Sinatra had a wild, crazy life. And sometimes I wonder, you know, my life never related to what he's been doing. Obviously, but it just seems like he had a cool life, just living his best life and, you know, singing, drinking, you know, getting ladies, yeah. obviously maybe ties <laughs> with the Bob. That's kind of <laughs> conspiracy theory talk, but yeah, it's just, you know, he's a cool dude, man. Some of them, he might get a bad rep here and there, but. I think yeah, yeah. he's pretty well respected. You know, he's a human being, right? Living fully alive and just being with himself and just, yeah, there you go. Fully. Re- well, he's on your wall. So there you go. He's respected by you. <laughs> yeah. You know, I mean, he's got a lot of what, you know, classic all time, great albums out. So I think he's got a huge following. So I don't know whatever happened with this. He's got a kid. I think he's got a kid. I don't know whatever's going on with that, but mm-hmm. anyway, uh-huh. well, what's up, dude? Uh, I don't, you know, why don't you do a little, uh, small introduction, just kind of give the inner or uh, the audience a little, I guess here save who you are, so to speak. <laughs> so you're like Roland Frank and Frank Sinatra style. Yeah. You're like, hey, bro, hey, bro, you just own it. You just I, like, I like a rolling start, dude. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. No, this is super fun. Hey, I'm just an average, ordinary human being. I think like us all. My first car was red. I uh, like I mentioned to you earlier, Same. and right. <laughs> and so red was nice. I like further, faster. Mm-hmm. It's who I am. And uh, I never meant to hurt anyone nor hurt myself, but I ended up doing a couple of things like hurting people and hurting myself. And so um, now, I'm, of course, in life, what have I come to? You know, I see certain things that you're fascinated by. And one of the reasons that I wanted to, to chat with you is just to see where you and I could take this place, uh, see where you take this conversation, uh, health and fitness, science, nutrition, entrepreneurship, self-improvement. My friend, Frank Sinatra, that, <laughs> that's my tone. <laughs> yeah. yeah, no, I like to... Um... I'm not an expert in anything, so at least that clear. Lightly. But, lightly. Yeah, but I like to, you know, I like to learn. I like to talk about different variety of things and just, you know, learn from people like yourself. Like, hey, man, what, mm. what, what, are, what have you been through, man? What's your walk of life? What have you done that mm. I, what I, what do you know that I don't know? And, you know, mm. and, you know, as far as debates and stuff, yeah, you know, I get a little pushback here and there, but, you know, that's yeah. not what I had planned here. But yeah, I just like to have a good conversation with cool people. Love it. Love it. What, what would you say, Chris, fascinates you most? Of life, like I just want to make sure I deliver for your audience and deliver for you a good experience. What fascinates me for life is that, Collins, it's uh, it's always changing. That we don't know what to expect each day. Yeah, we got kind of a sense, but you know, we really don't, you know, know what to expect. And and that, you know, the only thing we can figure out is like how do we adapt to the, you know, how much you know we're changing throughout life and how everything is just changed around us all the time and. You know, and just, you know, where will we go in, you know, 10, 20 years from now with all the new technology and stuff? You know, will we colonize Mars, you know, and stuff like that just kind of blows my mind nowadays. And it's just, Mm -hmm. you know, fun to think about. And, you know, I've been I like to follow Elon Musk, too. And just, you know, where he's actually trying to invent this. uh, It's called a Neuralink. I don't know if you've heard of it, but yeah, yeah, you know, put it in people's brains. Like, are we going to become cyborgs, you know, at one point in our lives? Are we going to have, you know, 5G coming into our own brain and have our own cell phone mm-hmm. so to speak inside of ourselves in which you know he was actually on a podcast talking about uh how we are already cyborgs because mm-hmm. we always you know not many people can go i'm not one anyway can go any anywhere and mm-hmm. without their phone you know mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. so mm-hmm. yeah so like and then if i do go somewhere without it i feel weird mm-hmm now that's a good point. If you go somewhere without it, you feel weird. And it's and if you don't feel weird when you are trying to Google something and you realize the phone isn't in your pocket, you just see everybody at the dinner table has got their cell phone laying right there. And you're like going, I'm the only one that's not looking at my phone. Is there a problem? <laughs> you see, feel weird, right? So it is what it ends up being. Yeah, but you, you don't out just look at it, you know, right? <laughs> well, why not? Right? You just yeah, do what you do. I'll just check the weather. <laughs> <laughs> like, I'm doing it too, y'all. I'm good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. No, that's so good. Hey, listen, um, if you know, if you don't mind, I'm just gonna interject. So you see you on. Um, and you were talking about this neural link and I, you know, I love innovation. Like a serious thing, brother, uh, innovation to me is just, uh, oh, you got it. You got to be about this. And I think if you own your style, like Frank Sinatra style, you own who you are when you own who you are. I think what ends up happening is you come to, and I, I think whether you own or not, actually, we, we come to this place in life where we ask ourselves the question, like, how do I see life? Do I see life as mostly safe or do I see it as dangerous? And so when we answer that question, do I see this safe and dang- or dangerous? Like, if you think about the debate of Elon Musk, Neuralink, we have this cyborg. What is this? And it's like you say, I'm not really interested in like good or bad. I'm just wanting to like wrestle with attention to see what's all about. When when you think about 
if we think that there are human beings that are actually trying to take us down, I mean, there have been Hitlers, but as far as I'm sure. concerned, there, there there's a few bad people in the world, like sure. bad, I agree. actually. I agree. But there might be five or six, and perhaps half of them are dead. <laughs> you know what I mean? Now, don't don't get me wrong. People are okay with stuff in their pockets, it seems like, right? Yeah. yeah. But, but here's what, the thing. What do you mean, okay, yeah. okay with stuff in your pockets? What do you mean? Well, what I mean like to phones? say is, is that what well, you're saying? Well, did you say phones? You said you said we're okay with stuff in our pockets. It's stuff in our pocket with money. So oh, okay, okay, that's what I was. So, it, so it's like people talking about conspiracy, or is it just an evolution of something? Like if you look at Rockefeller, he never. I don't think he intended for the medical community to end up where it was today. Okay. So conspiracy is if you actually have intent to hurt people. And you're and you're coming together with other people intending to hurt them. I don't I don't necessarily know if that was his intent. So it's like Elon Musk, right? So we ask ourselves the question: Hey, listen, is it safe if we have? And and, and I, I don't think you're necessarily debating is it safe or not. However, it's a cool concept. But the tension that people have is going: Hey, is this like is this you know is this healthy or unhealthy? Yeah. Should we be pumping the brakes? What should we do? And I'm kind of like going: Hey, listen, I know you can deal with 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 things, see it as dangerous. But if you constantly see things as danger. You know, that fire behind you, dude, it's, 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 it's burning behind you. It's the wall. <laughs> if you're not careful, you're not going to be able to roast marshmallows and enjoy the warmth of it. If you're just running from the thing, it's not going to help you. So you're just nice and relaxed sitting there. And I like that about you. Yeah, man. I mean, you know, I, I stare at it all the time. And a lot of people, you know, obviously, I think you talked about bulls earlier, but, you know, red's just a cool color to me. And, um, you know, it's part of my alma mater that I went to. And just, you know, I mean, I, I like it. It looks, and I've heard, you know, before, you know, I had a couple of lady friends like, ooh, red's your color. You know, and I was like, well, definitely going to start wearing this more now that I pressed you, you know, <laughs> like, no big deal. So, yeah, I mean, it's a cool color. It's probably that. And my other favorite color is blue, but, um, but yeah, but uh, you know, as far as like danger and stuff go, you know, I don't know, man. I mean, I, I never wanted, you know, as far as podcasting goes, I never wanted. I wanted both parties to walk away here. For, man, that was a great podcast. That just felt good. I feel better for actually having to sit down there and have that conversation. Whether just two knuckleheads just sitting back debating, talking over one another, and it's just like who's talking, who's saying what here? This is like I'm not getting anything out of this. Mm-hmm. So mm-hmm. that kind of makes sense. Yeah, no, that totally makes sense. I love it. I love it. I love it. No, and you know, it's you know, interesting when you say your favorite, second favorite color is blue. Of course, it'd be blue because if you have fire, you need some water. <laughs> fire, nice man. Right? Yeah, fire, yeah, nice. Good and that's point. It's funny. Did you fire nice? Did you see that on my uh, 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 your website? Because I actually have a fire nice. Yeah, I did, I, I did a little. I, I, what I do with my guests, and here's how the sausage is made. I do a little research on you and like get some talking points in my head and stuff like that. But I never do deep dives that way, just because. I don't want to already know something than just sit here and just be like, so James, you know, how was, uh, <laughs> what was your specific style of influence? And you know, something like that, you know, it's just, it's just, that's not conversation no. to me. Yeah. There is there a time and place for that? I guess if you go to an actual interview, I guess, but yeah. it's not, <laughs> not, it's not cool. It's just not, people don't want no. to hear that, you know, right. Uh, yeah. no, no, no. Like the thing is the last thing you want to do is you want, you want to set the guest up to have to reveal the factory floor and how he makes the sausage. Like, who wants to hear about the factory floor? My friend, <laughs> we want to eat the sausage. We don't want to like, take, don't take me down there. You know I, mean? <laughs> I like it. Yeah, dude. But yeah, that's just, that's exactly how I designed this. And you know, and speaking of debates and stuff, I had I did have somebody who kind of gave me pushback on that just because, hmm. and and I agree with her that you know it does show signs of respect if you already have, um, you know some kind of, you know questions made and you know where the conversation is going to go and stuff. But you know, to her point that she was doing something completely different than a podcast. So she was actually interviewing athletes at the time where I'm just sitting here, you know, this is what I like about podcasting too. You know, we don't get a two minute clip of, you know, why do you think, you know, red's a great color or blue's a cool color. You get to actually yeah. a drawn out five, yeah. 10 minute or however long it takes, you know, of why yeah. it was great. Whether than just saying, I don't know, James is like, he said red was cool. And like, that's your, that's the, the TV mark or whatever you say. And like, that's all you get to say. And it's like, well, you said more than that. So what's why did, why did he really think that, you know, why, or why did he think that all roads should be painted red? In, in the <laughs> well, I think, you know, to your point, you know, so I'm a life coach is what I do. A life nice. coach, what is that? What is that? Right. But it's not about nor- average ordinary human being. You know, when I think about oftentimes people think life coach. So what, you're the one that's full of wisdom. I'm like, Oh my goodness. Don't, don't be saying this. Cause I'm like, cause I'm a conscious stream. Like for me, it's like this. I'm like you, I, I, I want to experience who I actually am on the show. So I want to unfold in real time. I want to observe my Freudian slips. 
I want to enjoy. I want to be. Don't get me wrong. That doesn't mean you don't prepare ferociously for a moment like this. Like I know sure. when you showed up, dude, you were like studying notes. You're like rubbing your forehead. Just kidding. You weren't doing that. But you were. You were like preparing. You were looking at your phone to be honest. Which yeah, I was. Yeah, because I was like, oh man, this guy. Might. I've had people not show, and I was like, oh, two minutes after, he might not be showing. Oh, up. thanks for throwing me in the bus, bro. <laughs> no, like, oh, sorry, man. <laughs> <laughs> There's two minutes, dude. I've had people come out here five, ten minutes. Don't worry, man. That's no, I told. I know. I totally get it. But personally, I think there's something lost on today's culture. If we keep everything um, so tight and so laser down and so rehearsed, because dude, what what are we doing? If we do that, we're like freaking performing life. Mm -hmm. When you're living life, you want to get to see clearly what is in here. And so instead of just always enjoying the entertainment that's out there, like tonight, we're going to be watching my niece graduate. She's in Phoenix. My boys are there. We're going to watch it on like whatever FaceTime live, whatever's going on. But here's the thing. Here's, here's, here's the thing. Do we want to be always observing over there or do we want to watch our own channel? Like what the hell is going on in here and watch it on uncom- like, come on done. And it's like, Oh my goodness. That's who I am. That's so interesting. You know what I mean? Yeah. Enjoy you know, the show. Yeah. You know, a lot of people talk about, you know, when I first started this, like, what are you going to talk about? You know, what are you going to say on your podcast? So like, I don't know. I mean, that's the beauty of it. I want to make some magic happen with, you know, it, you know, just whoever I decided to bring on here. And I said, I said, well, that's, is that going to work? And I said, it might. And I don't know. I mean, if you want to call this a success, I don't know. But I mean, but I related to them that, you know, we podcast every day, dude. Like, you know, if we go out to eat, you know, we're sitting there talking about random stuff, you know, it could be motivation, influence, favorite colors for our first cars, you know, first wrecks or whatever. And just like, hey, man, that's kind of like a podcast. I mean, we're getting to know each other. We're talking about, you know, topics, philosophies and debates and what our politics are. What do we think on gun control, which we don't have to go down that road. But, you know, it's just. You know, it's a podcast, man. That's the beauty of it. Then, you know, when you meet somebody like yourself, like who we, we just kind of hit it off right there, just kind of going back and forth and you make some magic happen. And I never would have dreamed, you know, this would be happening, something like that, just because it still kind of blows my mind that, you know, besides a couple of emails we sent or whatever, you know, I had no idea what you were going to be like mm-hmm. to get into this and mm-hmm. where we we're going to go from there. You know, I could have had no clue. And that's the cool thing of it. Now, look what we're going. I don't know how far we're into this already, but look, yeah. wham, magic, baby. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's just it's just super fun. And, you know, to your you know, it's, it's fascinating when you talk about uh, magic. I think what's really interesting is um, a style like this is so refreshing. And I say that because who do we really want to observe? When I'm talking, do I want to observe a version of me and a projection of of who I think I might want to be for your audience? Or do I just want to, to the point again, unfolding in public in real time? Or do I give myself the gift? And do I give myself permission to fully exist and be here and allow myself to flow exactly? And I love what you're doing. I can see your style. Like I'm just observing here and I'm seeing That you're you're not too interested in getting into the weeds on too many specifics. You're like, yeah, it's free flow. Let's enjoy yeah. your time. And to be totally honest, here's the thing: the audience. I know audience. You're thinking about the same thing. You want to see authenticity. I had a story years ago. I was at this talk, mm-hmm. and I got really bored. I couldn't figure out why. I've been at many of these talks, and this talk was just boring as shit. Pardon the language. Oh, no, you can say yeah. Just say it on here, man. I don't. I don't care. <laughs> Me it's just, it, and yeah, it was just boring as it's garbage. I'll get out. And I'm sitting there. And what's interesting is after the third speaker, I'm beginning to realize that everyone is doing about the same thing in the audience. So there's like thousands of people in the crowd and, and we're all sitting there. We're all supposed to be enjoying. We spent big money to be here. And then what happens though, is every time they introduce a new speaker, we do about the same thing. The person comes out, the host introduces, and it's like a two to three minute ramble on accolades, which we're like, okay. Fair enough. This is typical, right? This is what happens. But then the speaker comes up and literally every speaker, they must have been coached to do this. They themselves prop themselves up with accolades for the next five to seven minutes. We were looking at our phone after the third one. We've been becoming trained to what was happening. Mm -hmm. We're like, they come on. It's 10 seconds in. We're looking at our phones. We're like, we're out. And here's the interesting part. I think when you do stuff like just talk about all of the wins of your life, meaning all of the good, instead of just let everything be, what ends up happening is the human, the observer, if we're in the audience, think about you audience, when you're listening to this over here, you want to see about who the person is, because if you don't, we're making it hard for you for us to be able to connect with you, because mm-hmm. we're not showing your realism. 
Yeah. We are who we are. I was two freaking minutes late and this bro said it. And I'm like, I love it. That's kind of a That's dick why- move. That was kind of a dick move looking back on it. I shouldn't have said that. No. Break that up. But no, I know I like it. I but like no, it. I can relate, dude, just because, you know, in my line of work, you know, and I'm not going to mention any names or whatever, but there was this person and she was a, uh, uh, you know, one of the top people in, in uh, where I work at. But every presentation was always literally the same exact presentation, maybe a few words different here and there. So the first couple of times, you know, you go to them and, you know, we had to go to these, you know, conferences like you were talking about or little, you know, division meetings and blah, blah, yeah, yeah. blah. But yeah, yeah. But yeah. So the first time, I'm like, okay, cool. You know, she came in brand new. Cool. Great. All right. That was a great presentation. Okay. Second time. Just <laughs> looked at my colleague. Was that this? She's saying the same thing. You know, the third time he was like, like, you know, two months down the road, this is, does she know that we're the same people? And it was like me just like, all right, you know, even fourth time, then it's like it, our staff retreat or whatever. She's doing the exact same thing again. And just yeah. maybe changed a few slides, but it's exact, she's got it rehearsed word for word. And I'm just getting my phone. It's like, I already heard this three, four times, man. Like, But yeah, it was just like, this is not, what, 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 what is she doing? You know, she don't have to do this. Does she know that? But, you know, and she was a good person other than that. I mean, I don't want to shit on her completely, but no, no. yeah, but it was just like, why? Why? What is, this is not benefiting anybody, you know? Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. Exactly. Oh, that's the thing, right? Performing your life. It's like, yeah, you're going to show up with PTSD when it comes to that. <laughs> Please don't. I mean, PTSD, I have to be sensitive. But yeah, no, no it, 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 chances are she, she wasn't even aware of what she was doing. Maybe it she, was that, but you know, but well, let's, let's, let's switch gears a little bit though. So, Please. but yeah, yeah. so why, why life coach? Why did you get involved in life coaching? Was this something that you just kind of always wanted to do? Is this part of like fell in your lap? It was just what, what happened, dude? Well, this is the last, you know, what happened oh, story. <laughs> <laughs> this is the last call of my day. And you know, you ended that sentence as with what's up, dude. I'll never forget. <laughs> I'll never forget. So I was raised in a home where uh, my dad didn't have a lot of money. Okay. And, and uh, so they say as parents and just try this on for where they say that we actually as people, so as children, or just as people, we actually follow what someone's desire is more than what they demand for, from our life. So from your parents, for example, there's demand and there's desire, right? And I could tell that my dad really, really demanded of us that we're good Christian people, right? Okay. Good Christian boys. I have a boy. He had one boy, four girls. And um, it's super fascinating. His his desire, though, is he would look upon all the wealthy farmers, and we would drive around Sunday blaming all of them for apparently working on a Sabbath, okay? Sure. And all, and all, and all that I could uh, reduce, deduct in my little brain at the time, was that I think my dad really likes money because he, he, he's looking at all these new combines, and he's really saying he wished he could have that, right? <laughs> <laughs> so fast forward, so I get married at 24, my wife's 20. Okay. And, um, and I guess a proof to myself and I, you know, I, I proved to my dad that I could make money. And so I thought I did, did well, right. I, no doubt. You know, I made a couple of mil built these, you know, I had, you know, my, my, uh, my builders built the custom homes. We moved them out, whatever. Um, fast forward though, what's interesting is, uh, why life coach? Why like, you know, what's interesting. I never chose the industry. The industry chose me. There was a season of my life. I'll never forget my wife. She was, she was raised in a home where um, her dad was a raging alcoholic. Her mom was, was addicted to religion and her dad was addicted to alcohol. And those two didn't blend very well. No, I would say not. Right. And so, uh, right. And so she, her brother gave her a Tony Robbins, Awaken the Giant Within book when she was uh, 11 years old or so and said, read this. So when we're dating, I remember one of the first gifts she gave me for my birthday was a Unwaken, yeah, Awaken, Unwaken, <laughs> Awaken. Don't worry, I say stuff wrong all the time, dude. Don't worry about it. <laughs> Perhaps you said I was late wrong before. Perhaps it was two minutes early. Just kidding. <laughs> you were just staring I think that's what it was, actually, yeah. <laughs> now that I think about it. <laughs> You're like, he's watching, he's sitting on the phone. Anyway. <laughs> so, no, it was interesting. So, one of the first birthday gifts I got from my little sweetie, you know, I just call her my mini Megalicious. She's four ten and three quarter. I love that little pumpkin. She's just my little button. I love her. She gave me a, a, a Tony Robbins book, and I thought, what kind of horse shit is this? <laughs> what is this? What is this? Like, dude, I don't need somebody to tell me that, that I need to feel like yeah, what is this? What is this? <laughs> but because I but because I loved her, she kept asking me how far I'd read. Okay. I'm like, I'm like, well, I, I, I'm not really a reader. I said to her, but I'm hey, I'm getting through it. Yeah, I put my I put a book bar in. I think it's a page four, probably or something like. Nice. That. But here's it's interesting. Fast forward that uh, down another ten years or so, and all of a sudden I had Nita back. And what's interesting is I think in life we, so I'm 46 now in life uh, and age has little to do with it other than it seems to me that at, you know, at around 40 or so, 
we come to a place where anything that we've been kicking down the line comes to haunt us and it comes together. And all of a sudden it's like, so I had a, a son who was born high functioning autistic. Mm. And of course I was audited by different things, audited by the government. They wanted me to pay X amount of money for, for, for apparently I hadn't paid enough taxes. I had the money. I didn't want to pay it to them. You know how it is. And of course, so what do you do? You resist and to fight the government's not a good idea. Not typically anyway. <laughs> so when you speak about, you don't need to talk about gun control, well, that, that would kind of go in line with that. You don't fight that. If the government says they want money, you pay them basically. <laughs> sure, okay? sure. And so make a long story short, short I, I checked out of life for two and a half years and I tried to sedate myself away from life. I successfully uh, didn't end my life, but I slept my life away. 18 and a half hours a day, I was laying in bed. Damn. I near lost my marriage. 18 and a half bloody hours in bed, my friend. Damn. I'm. You know what? You just you just checked out, just laying there, just didn't care about Mel- melatonin, gravel, saying I was going to work, parking my vehicle down some dirt road, pulling a blanket over me and sleeping like a bum in the back seat. Bro. Two and a half years. You were doing that for two and a half years. Two and a half years. I was trying to think my way out of this dystopia. And you know what? Here's the thing. We all end up invariably at a place where life hands us something that we don't know what the fuck to do with it's more than we can handle we say and you know what all the other roosters that we've been kicking down the road not dealing with how we're really handling both the wins and losses of our life my friend come to haunt us and all of a sudden we sit and we look at it and we reconcile i spent two and a half years trying to think my way out of this shit didn't work too well try to think yourself out of something like this This is an invitation for you to think differently, not think yourself out of it, not think yourself around pain, not do an end run around pain like we so often do. We label fear as bad, and often what we do is we then label a loss as bad. Yeah. You know, my son was born high functioning autistic. You know, I had to, I had to, I had to die to the idea that it was going to be different. Yeah. And why is that so hard? Why is dying to the idea of like he is a non-typical child so difficult well i know for me i never been tested for anything i mean who you see today i've developed like who i've become my friend if you asked me what you and i did today the way you started this podcast off i would have bailed so quickly i didn't know how to laugh my wife taught me how to laugh i was so anxious and so nervous laughter made me stressed i live life heavy wow and all, and all that i can tell you is i changed 10 years ago, I came out of that story. 10 years ago, out of that story. Today, my motto is tears and laughter. I love laughing and crying every day because it's life. Love it. If I haven't haven't had a cry, like right now, I can feel the cry coming because it's just like tapping in, man, life. And I feel the laughter at the same time. Like, shit, it's so good. We feel. Yeah. Damn it, right? Was this something... Just growing up that you had held back in yourself and you just kind of submerged it down. Like, I'm never going to, you know, I don't need to cry. And, you know, I don't need to let people see me like this. And because, yeah, yeah. I mean, I was kind of, I can relate to that a lot, you know, and I was just talking about that on my other podcast. I, I was never really told how to be vulnerable or anything or talk about my feelings and stuff. And, mm. you know, now it's just kind of like I'm learning that even still, you know, I'm going to be 36 next month and I'm still kind of learning that. Mm-hmm. You know, that it's okay to show your feelings. It's, you know, I, I teared up on a podcast, not even, not this podcast, but I was listening to a podcast. Um, it was two comedians and, you know, the long story short, the gist of it was that, you know, where they travel so much that, uh, um, you know, they don't get to see their kids and mm-hmm. they were having a, a whiskey drink and they're just talking. And one of the other comments, you know, he was a co- comedian. asked him, it's like, well, does, he's newer. And he's like, does it get any better? Mm-hmm. And the other comment or gosh, a comment comedian started just, he's like, he's like, no, nah, man. Nah. And then they both were just like, you know, tearing up just because, you know, they, God, I want to see my kids grow up. You know, I've been away from so long. And, and I was sitting there in my office just like, like, shit, you know, like, and I don't even have kids, but I was relating to them, man, on a whole nother level. It was wild, you know? That's, that's incredible. And yeah, you know, to answer or to just talk a bit about, you know, I got to be so careful because I love my parents and, you know, the nature of nurture. What I can say is my parents were busy people. They ran, you know how it is. We're all busy doing yeah. stuff. My parents oh, had a small yeah. farm. My dad was the pastor of a mega church, always gone, serving people. If you can imagine, always. Bottom line, my brain thinks a little different than the average beast. <laughs> okay. Right. Well, that's good. So, so yeah, it's a bit like yours. It's like a little random. It's good. It's kind of fun. It, it, you yeah. know, I, at least I feel I enjoy this now, but I used to say it's my problem because guess what? Whenever I would do that with my parents, 
And again, no blame for them, but they probably just were busy. Mm -hmm. But whenever I did that, no response. Yeah, well, I it, can relate to that, dude. I, just, I don't, I don't mean to cut you off. Shut up. Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Yeah, I don't know. Just because, you know, growing up, that, that was part of the other reason why I started this podcast is just that, you know, we never had, that I can remember, my brother might say different, but sitting around the dinner table having conversations, you know, about, you know, politics, gun control, you know, Roe v. Wade, stuff like that. So mm. I would always shy away from mm. certain conversations like that and just put myself in the back and, or just find a reason, you know, to go look at my phone for when, I, when I was little, obviously, but find a reason to get the hell out of there. Yeah. <laughs> and so, yeah, but, you know, and I don't know, and that was no fault to my parents. I don't know, mm -hmm. you know, if that was just they didn't know or whatever, but on. yeah, and, and that was just, that was just it for me. It was just, we were just usually just talking about, you know, I guess what the plans were for the weekend or whatever, but we never had, you know, tough conversations like that. And that was kind of, but like growing up, even when I got to college and everything, I was just, you know, I, I was always nervous to share how I felt about something or, you know, wow. yeah. yeah, you, yeah, you, you and I are very similar. I don't know how you can relate with this, but something that came to heart for me is um, mm -hmm. my parents didn't do difference very well. How do you so mean? They hold, so they held their faith pretty tightly. Mm -hmm. And so here's the thing. If you ever had a thought that challenged their belief structures, <laughs> mm. oh my goodness, the, 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 the sure way of having that stop is just don't respond to it. So they didn't respond. So it wasn't like I was poking at a structure to try to take them down. It's like, you're curious. You're, you're, and here's the thing, younger generations, what are we here for? To help evolve the narrative forward for whatever it is. We're like, and why is it, why does grandma cut the turkey like this? If we're not careful, we just keep cutting the turkey backwards thinking this is how it's supposed to be done. Exactly. You know, so we're like, hey, just tell me why. What is this? And so anytime, so how we handle difference. My parents felt most comfortable when there can be an environment of similarity. And we could all be together and sing kumbaya. Well, they psychoanalyst, so I study, you know, I study under a psychoanalyst. He talks a little bit about if you ever want to get into a really non-helpful and unhealthy environment, go to a place where somebody asks the question, asks a question. And everybody agrees to it. He goes, if everybody agrees to the same shit, he goes, you want to get the F out of there. Sure. I agree. Right. Because there's yeah. not a chance if, if you, yeah, you and I have similarities. You like red. I like red, but mm -hmm. we're connecting because we're interested in the difference that we are. And we're choosing to connect with the difference and not disconnect with it. Exactly. Right. Yeah. You got to build that human connection of some sort. Right. It is. Yeah. But yeah, no, I can relate just because touching on what you said, just, you know, my, I, we didn't, so we, we grew up religious, but we didn't grow up religious. You know, I remember going to church, but it was only kind of when it felt like convenient. And, um, you know, and like, you know, it seemed like, you know, Easter and Christmas, we were there or whatever. But sure. yeah, yeah, but there was never, you know, big Bible studies going on at our house or anything like that. <laughs> but I do, you know, you know, I brought up a couple of times, you know, like, remember, was it a couple of years ago? I read it in the pandemic that I don't know how it is and where you're in Vancouver or whatever. But, you know, the Pentagon was going to release some. Um, all the information they had on UFOs, right? <laughs> yeah, for here. And, you know, and I talked to my mom about it and it was into like, nah, they're not real. And I was like, what do you mean? How do you know? And she's like, you know, like started bringing up the Bible and stuff like that. And I was like, come on, mom. I mean, really? You're, you're going to preach a Bible on me with this right there? And, she, mm -hmm. and yeah, so it was one of those things that if I kind of went against the narrative that she was taught growing up, I was then yeah. like, you're making fun of the Bible. I was like, no, I'm not. I'm just literally this was posted on the news i mean i'm not making this up i'm not this is not a movie this is not we're not watching independence day right here this is literally you know what the pentagon was going to release and i don't really know whatever happened of, about it but but yeah like you know it's kind of like me poking fun of it and i was the wrong person for even bringing that stuff up and i was like well, we're just talking about it i'm not saying anything bad about anything we're just we're just going down this road here who knows you know yeah 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 yeah. So yeah, they say they, they say the sign of a very intellectual mind is someone who can hold a plethora of differing thoughts without feeling like they have to adopt any one single of them. Ooh. You can just you can just hold the thought, just be with it. It's okay. Like why why feel so threatened? Like here's here's what I would say to something like what you're describing. Mm -hmm. and I, and you know what? I don't know your mom, but I have no business talking about anything that you, <laughs> you know, it's it's all good. But I would say a very shallow faith, and my parents would be the exact same way. You know, yeah. they find need of God because God apparently rescues them from the threats that they can't reconcile. They don't know how to do be okay with just having a conversation about something. I would say this: a faith is pretty shallow when you can knock it down, when you can knock it, just knock one leg, and all of a sudden it crumbles. Like you, you talk about UFOs, and all of a sudden they go for the jugular. Think about it: the human being knows constantly 
that if it's about trying to convert someone into a way of thinking beliefs, beliefs are a poor excuse for an experience. Good point. There's, new, there's freaking news out there. Apparently that UFOs, there's something going on. Someone yeah. just someone just denying it. Ask yourself, what, what manner of influence is your mom choosing not to have in your life when she says that? Like you're looking at it going, mom, you're just not being logged. You're not even able to logically contemplate this. And so mm-hmm. if you're just shutting it out, you're just feeling so threatened, which makes you not think her faith is very strong, nor does it attract you to her faith. Mm-hmm. You know exactly. what I mean? So it's kind, yeah, it's kind of one agree. of these things, right? And so this is this is what I hear going on here. You and I are similar, and here's here's why. Typically, what ends up, and we're different in many ways, but similar. Let's just take it this way. Yeah, we got it. Yeah. yeah. You, you and I are showing up here today, and we're just going at it. Now, here's what's interesting. You and I have both had both had situations unfold in life where when we don't fit in what do they do well they don't say things they don't respond Mm -hmm. and the typical response is what what that group will typically do is first they'll try being nice to seduce you back in then if that doesn't work they'll go really harsh on you and they'll ping pong back and forth and what's interesting is the human being is an autonomous being and whether they do that or not my friend you and i will find each other and here we are <laughs> that's how it goes. Wow, dude, that's a that's a great point. I've never heard it like that before. But that that's really great, dude. Wow. Yeah. I like UFOs. That, hey, what hey, what had you interested in UFOs? I don't know, dude. I mean, I just popped know, up. Touching about conspiracy theories again and stuff. It's just, you know, do I believe in them? I don't. Could be. I don't know. But it's it's kind of just fun, you know. Do I believe in Bigfoot? I don't know. I mean, a reason not to not believe it, I guess. But it's just one of those things that you know we're talking about. You know, what, what was it? One of those things, there's only 10% of the ocean has actually been discovered of what's underneath there or mm-hmm. something. I don't know. And, mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Now that, you know, with technology and everyone's got cameras and stuff and that, you know, there's easily stuff we can learn so much stuff. We can figure out what are the mysteries of the world that we don't know yet. Just for example, didn't they just find another, um, in China, there was a sinkhole. They, and there was a forest actually in that sinkhole mm-hmm. they just found. And well, it was like, well. Yeah. And I think this was like in the last week or two, I saw that and I was like, wow. And then now even like Mars, there's a doorway they found that was built. They think it looks like a doorway that's built inside. Like a, it could be just a rock formation, but it was like, wow, you know, it's just like this. What is that? You know, what is that? It just sparks my curiosity. And is there life out there? I don't know, but it's, it's fun to think about and it's fun to talk about, you know, and, just, <laughs> and that's kind of what it is for me, you know, cause I, I'm really kind of on the fence of it, but, and I like to look at it both ways and just, you know, like, well, I mean, it's definitely you know, it's definitely valid. There could be something, but who knows? Yeah, but, yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah well, it like, sounds so so back to the definition of an intellectual mind. It sounds like that's what you're doing. Yeah. Like, no, like you don't need, yeah, you don't need to decide. See, the thing is about what I often think is this beliefs are des- beliefs. People who have really fundamental beliefs, they decide on them because they say this is what sets the captive free. <laughs> and I look at it and say to myself, Hey, I just brought you UFOs and it doesn't seem very freeing to you. <laughs> you know, yeah. so so, hey, I get it. For some people, beliefs work. For other people who like to really feel it all, like you and I, mm-hmm. hey, there is a way of living life. And you can feel very little, have these beliefs that keep you in line. And apparently, you just pass on orthodoxy. It's like this. I pass you a baton. You shut up and listen. You do what I tell you to, Johnny, and away you go. And you're going to live a free life, Johnny. You're going to have kids, and you're going to make us proud. You got it? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, touching on that, you know, going back, I, I forgot who I was talking to, but we were talking about, you know, does. You know, and I'm a firm, you know, I believe in education firmly, but I'm also a believer. Hey, you do whatever you want to do, man. If if I college is not for you, cool. But, you know, we, we were touching on you. Is that the problem with education, though, today that they teach you what to think and not really how to think? Oh, that right there. You nailed it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, and I, and I was under that firm belief that, you know, and I went and got my master's and all that, but it was, I was under that, oh yeah, the, you know, the more education you get that, you know, the more successful you'll be in life and all that stuff. And I don't want to, you know, and I'm not shitting on it by any means because I had a great experience and I'm, I'm glad I have it. But I mean, but that was the social narrative for me growing up was that push you to school, push you to school. And I never really was learning like, you know, I, I would have never knew what a life coach was back in, mm-hmm. you know, 20 years ago when I was in college or whatever. So yeah, but I, I never knew there was other alternative ways except just to get a degree and hopefully make money and go live out your 30 years and go sit on a beach and drink Mai Tais or margaritas or whatever it is. Well, and I think there's probably a segment, tell me what you think on this, but I, you know, I'm just, I'm willing to be wrong anywhere. And, you know, we're not solving for right or wrong. Well, as far yeah, as I'm concerned, dude, that, that's me. Talking, that's me, dude. I don't mind being wrong. wrong. I'll admit to being wrong. No, 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 no exactly. Right. Yeah. And, you know, and so the, you know, into the conversation of, of uh, teach or being about um, how to think or what to think. 
you know, I think there's probably a segment of, 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 of society that genuinely enjoys, for them it's freedom to be taught what to think. And then there's other people that just, you know, and I would say the majority of us, I might be making a wide statement, but it seems like, so if you look at, for example, children these days, kids coming out of college, whatever, they, they don't know where their purpose is. Sure, I ask, agree. Ask, ask yourself something. A human actually has something within them that's unique to them that if they tap into their energy, they actually kind of know what they want to be about. Mm -hmm. They actually know what they want to be about. Sure. And so here's what's interesting, though. If we put on to them, here's what they should think. We literally take their autonomy and we say, no, we're going to control your autonomy. Yeah. So I think majority of us, I'm just going to make this statement. I don't know if I'm right okay. or wrong. I have no idea. That's but okay. I would say based on how I feel, like I, I feel very understanding towards my style. I try to understand others who say what to think is important. But all that I happen to know is it seems like if you really focus on what to think, and it's not just my parents, but I observe other people. It's like they have these roadblocks that they choose so that they can see life in a very narrow lens. Mm -hmm. And here's the thing that that helps them solve to live in the community they live in. It helps to describe why they do what they do. It makes complete sense. But I look at it and I say to myself, you know where I do have a problem. I have a problem. If I'm going to make room for them, why can't they make room for me? Why can't they make room for you and your style? Yeah. You know yeah. what I mean? Like that's where the education side is like, you know what we have? And I think the internet, I don't know what you think about this, but I think like online, like getting college after high school, when you know what I mean? I think there's a shift happening. I wonder if not, but I, but I am concerned honestly for it. But what I've realized is a human being cannot be trapped. You're going to try to tell a human being that it can't be autonomous. Mm -hmm. Even, you know, even a slave back in the day, the best slaves who slept near the master, as soon as the master would turn his back, they'd be gone. No doubt. Yeah. Right? Who wants to live a life like that? Yeah. No, no, I mean, yeah, it's very dream crushing. You know, I was never, you know, growing in high school that it was always, you know, what college are you going to? What college are you going to? Like, yeah. I don't know. I mean, I don't, I guess wherever I get in, you know, it was never, mm -hmm. you know, if I would have probably said, you know, if I wanted to go, oh, I want to be a famous, you know, comedian, I guess, which I never really had that. But you know, just if it would have been instantly, no, you'll never do that. And yeah, so, oh. and so it's like, here, you stay on this line of thinking, you know, go live out your life or go live your college years, get your job for 30 years. Go and that's like no, that can't be what life is, and that's what kind of what this pandemic has taught me that because you know I've gone through this, you know I've been working in my field, you know ten plus years now, and you know when the pandemic hit these last two years, it kind of went like damn, that was I'm ten years now, you know what happened, you know I didn't really ask any questions, and I just kind of was living off momentum, and, and I was like fuck, you know like yeah yeah what yeah, I, yeah. yeah what what have I been doing? Have I actually been living for me? If I actually this is what is this what I had planned out? And yeah, that was like. This was not, Shit. yeah. I mean, and that's not that's not a bad thing because I'm not making it bad by any means. Because no, no, you know, I, I yeah, because I, I I got a good life, you know. I mean, I got a good job, you know. I got I'm healthy, you know. I got two little dogs. I don't know if you can see them behind me here sometimes, but <laughs> yeah. But I mean, I'm not complaining by any means because it's way it can be way worse than that. But it's just wondering, like, whoa, you know. And if everything goes right, you know, as far as what science tells us, I might have another. 36, 40 plus years. And I do have a goal of becoming a centurion at one point, hopefully, but who Good knows? Job. You're yeah. not, you're not guaranteed that, but, no, but yeah, no. but it was kind of like, fuck, yeah. you know, my life could be half over right now for me. Yeah. Is this what I had planned? Yeah. Well, you know, you bring in a fascinating point. Like I have a little, well, they call me the self-development hacker. So I'm, I'm literally the unself-help person. So personally, I, I do like Tony Robbins. Is he self-help? Sure. But he's the unself, the way I look at him, he's real. He's raw. He's, if you've been to one of the events, if you really get into it, he's not like turning facts into positive bullshit. No, he doesn't do this kind of stuff. But if I look at it, here's the thing, the undertow, and I think COVID, you know what I honestly think? This is just my, this is my illusion. Okay. So, uh, but people have, you know, analysts, psychoanalysts do talk about this. And that is, they say the real challenge, the real problem in society because of COVID has revealed that we as society, we have this anxious, repressed um, feeling about that we're not progressing fast enough. Now ask yourself this, if you're, if, if you're, yeah. Wow. That we're not progressing fast enough. And so we're like, oh, we're not, where, where are we going? First thing, where are we going? Other than the only place we can be is here. If you're going to try to yeah. flee your presence, good luck. Yeah, good luck with that, for sure. But we're good not. Good luck with that shit. We're right? not actually progress enough. I mean, look, we've had iPhones for, what, since 2006? And now look where we're at. You know, that's 20 years. Yeah, that's two decades. But damn, I mean, another 20 years. I mean, like neuro. I mean, hell, we get Neuralink and stuff again. I mean, but that's a that's pretty fast, and we're. I feel like with technology, the way it's going, we're going faster and faster and faster. 
And so I think at the root of it all lies not progressing fast enough, meaning we're not getting what we want fast enough. We're mm-hmm. not getting our preferences fast enough. It's like, oh my goodness. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Have fun with that one. Yeah, but damn, I mean, not getting what we want fast. I mean, this is, you know, somebody might argue this is not a great time to be alive, but I mean, as far as technology purpose, I mean, you get groceries delivered to your door in a matter of hours. I mean, in a package, you know, here you can watch TV and stream your favorite movie instantaneously, but I mean, is that kind of what you're kind of going off of? I mean, yeah, but, yeah, I know, dude, I know what you're saying. And if you think of the markets, the markets have taken a you know pretty big hit. Yeah. However, you know, you listen to the Elon Musk, you listen to these people in tech, the people who are in copying, the people that are actually innovating, like not building on that which you have reference for, but creating new things, not just copying the iPhone, creating new shit, like new stuff. You yeah. Know, if you look at what can actually, and it's already happening to some degree, but they're suggesting that that if we go through a recession, it likely will be a lot less of a pierce of that hurtful side because innovation is going to speed us through that because it's going we can innovate so quickly, so quickly we can innovate our and so instead of like this is the beautiful thing about innovation instead of trusting innovation instead of enjoying innovation instead of being like playing with the curious mind instead of that then apparently apparently. Why wouldn't we just keep getting more worried that we're not getting what we want fast enough? And that's going to somehow get us back to the land and the country that we want. It helps us nothing to do that. I don't need to talk about the past president, but bottom line is this, because that's not a good place to be. And I, I'm, I'm not taking sides. I'm a Canadian, so I'm a peacekeeper, please. <laughs> <laughs> so, anyway. I like it. Here, here's a good question. If uh, Speaking of innovation stuff, if you had a chance to go to space, do you think you would? In 10 years, like they, they commercialize space travel. Uh-huh. Think you'd go? That's a great question. Hey, I could only respond based on how I live my life now. So I'm just like stress testing. How, how do I live? Do I live on the edge? Mm. Um, I probably, here's my, the best answer would be, um, my answer in 10 years, yes. Um, you asked me this question before I was married. I would have said two years, not a problem. But I'm responsible two more people, not for my wife and kids, but to them. Sure. And so I'd say, listen, I got to make sure I got a stress test. These things aren't blowing up Elon anymore, but I don't care. You got a hundred launches. Show me a thousand. <laughs> I want to make sure it doesn't blow up. But yeah. here's the thing. If, you know, if I watch where my dollars go, so, you know, in 10 years from now, it's going to cost me some pesos to go lately. Right? Yeah. But if, you know, if I look at what I have in my home, I have roughly $350,000 of gear, medical gear. And that I use frequently. I got okay. ozone. I got, I got, I got, you know, like a whole bunch of things. And so I love tech. And so if you, if, if you ask me, my hobby is actually to, um, so on the concept of, am I getting fast, my preference fast enough? My thing is to actually be about um, experiencing not through anxious striving, like a lot of longevity, a lot of some of longevity people, some of the docs, they're actually just helping people delay their anxieties because we can live longer so we don't have to face the fear of death. Like, like we're, we're all going to die. Yeah. As far as I'm concerned, like my platform, weekly wins and losses, every week I do a no charge at noon call people around the world. They check in, they share a win, they share a loss. And here's the thing. If we don't have the, if we choose to not uh, activate our ability towards gaining from a loss. We're not talking about making a loss positive. We're talking about just letting the loss. It didn't turn out as we thought it would. Mm -hmm. But here's what I've decided. That because we experience those things, because I'm okay with that, that doesn't have me not want to see how far I can go. Yeah. And how far I can take it without hurting myself or anyone. And so, so I'm a ferocious person on the edge. I think I would. How about you? Would you go? Yeah, for sure. Well, I shouldn't say I think. I know I would, but yeah, yeah I love just, it. I think I, I think I got to man. Um, I mean, how many people can say they went to space? You know, and just and plus, you know, and you know, from listening to other astronauts who've actually talked about their, uh, you know, their talk about their um, their experience, it gives you this whole new perspective on, you know, yourself and life, and just you know. You know, you see the world as it is. It's like, why are you know, why are people fighting? Why do we have these boundaries? I mean, why this is like, it's like, wow, it's just, mm-hmm. it just brings this whole new energy about you and this whole new way of thinking. It's like, and just to see that thing and just say that I've been there. I mean, not just because there's not many people have been there, but just you know, what value would it bring to me and like, would it change like how I feel about other things in life? Yeah, like blow your mind like that. And 
I'll never forget. I was, uh, so I made my first million or was it two, but it doesn't matter. But I remember at the time going, how can I fly in a fighter plane? Now I'm not a trained fighter plane pilot, but, and I was collecting all these air miles. So we're buying all of our supplies for homes through, yeah. through, through visa. And, and so I accumulated, what was it? Like a million, two million points. And I, and, and so my first, but before I accumulated, I looked at their reward program and for $750,000 that you spent on visa, you got to fly co-pilot in a fighter but they took that away when i got to 750 they took it away and oh. that was my first goal and i'm like damn i'm getting in that sucker because i want to play with the throttle a little bit yeah. i want to toggle that baby i want to feel it i want to feel it that's so, what we want in life we want to feel we want to go to the edge and then pull it back and then go to the edge and pull it back yeah man everyone wants that little bit of like risk taking i mean look at roller coasters and stuff yeah man they love people love that shit you know? And what do we all do at the same time when we're on the roller coaster anyway? Whether you sit in the back or the front, we all go like this anyway. Yeah, when, you're screaming <laughs> you your head off, man. Do? Yeah, doesn't matter where. But yeah, I agree that, you know, I mean, maybe that's, you know, a blanket statement. But, I you know, maybe a lot of people don't want those risks. Maybe they try those risks and they've learned never to take them again. And they've learned that, oh, no, I'll just live in a safe zone from now on. But I you think know, a, lot of people, a, lot of, mm -hmm. a lot of people like to experience it, in my, in my opinion. What would you say is the upside of risk for you? Like you're not risk adverse, but you don't, you don't sound like somebody that likes to gamble. Like you don't, like you, you uh, don't seem like you're uh, like a VLT kind of, or like let's gamble my life away kind of. Um, so I had a family member. Um, he, got, he got a gambling addiction and he was a probably multimillionaire, was a multimillionaire, ruined his whole life. Well, wow. And I saw that at a young age. And I think as far as, seeing that I kind of, it got kind of embedded into me that shoot, you know, which mm. like, you know, I've, I've never had any problems with addiction or anything, but I'm just seeing that it's like what, what it could do to somebody. I, like, I never want to be addicted to anything. And, and it seemed like, you know, somebody young age, cause you know, he had a wow. big house, horses, wow. you know, cars, motorcycles, boats, jet skis. It, it was so fun to go over there and stuff, but you know, and I never really learned what was going on until it was too late. And so, but then part of me is also that, you know, a lot of people who are really successful in life, they've learned to take big risk and they've won from it. And that's not from a gambling standpoint, but just whether if it's like a business deal or, mm -hmm. you know, starting up, start up or just whatever. And so that's the other part of me. It's just like, well, you got to take risk to see, to kind of find out about who you are in life and see where it goes. And then, you know, say that risk doesn't work out, but learn from that mistake, learn what happened and maybe try again later down the road. Just don't let it defeat you and take a nail kind of what you were touching on earlier, you know. And that's what, how I actually do learn is learning from my mistakes. I'm very trial and error type of guy, but yeah, but like, it does scare me though, to a certain point that without knowing the unknown or now without knowing the known or unknowing or whatever it is, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. but yeah. Cause I was like, man, well, I, I just seem, want to go down the road. But you know, it, you know, you know, it's interesting. However, it does seem like you're actually quite comfortable in the unknown. And it's interesting. The reason I say this is it reflects within what you're talking about. You say, I definitely go. You don't hesitate. You say, I'm, 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 you know, I'm in. Yeah. If you think about today's world, how have we, COVID, how have we used that as an opportunity to say that the thing that we want least is risk? When, when the immigrants came over, all they had was risk. Right. And apparently we can't, don't get me wrong, COVID, real thing, not real thing. I'm not debating this. P people have died. Well, fair sure. enough. Okay, sure. whatever it is. And I had COVID twice. I know it wasn't fun. Sure. Okay. But here's the thing. If you think about it, if we can't, if we have made risk such a fearful concept, if we are afraid of the fear of risk, my friend, everything in life is risk. And here's the thing, what I'm hearing you say is this, society, do as you wish. The truth is not everything is going to come to kill you, okay? Not everything is dangerous. I agree. And guess what? If there's science to back it up and if there's proof to back it up, <laughs> you know what? Honestly, and if, if I die and if you say, well, see, we proved it to you, and you're like, well, I'm not here anyway, but I proved it to you that risk is not the thing to do. You're like, listen, I'm not going to gamble my life away, but I'm going to, I'm going to play with risks mm -hmm. measurably in a way, in a way that actually aligns with what, what the world is. It's evolving. Why are we trying to solve beliefs? Just try to solve shit. Yeah. yeah. As soon as you solve something, you end the story. Like I'll never forget my parents. So back to the story. That's okay. My, just real quick. So my parents are like, and. Hey, I love them for, for it, but they have beliefs. Now I lost my way and I love it because your red wall distracted me. So I'm moving on. <laughs> no, dude. Um, but no, I, I like the way out the pros and cons for it. And I like for anything really like, like it says to value and, you know, I like to do my research, kind of what you said. And like, I know, okay, you know, go into space or whatever. 
I, you know, nine times out of 10, I'll probably be okay. There could be some hiccups there, but no, but from what I'm able to gain from that, you know, like I was talking about the experience and the value of it and just how it would change my life probably. Yeah, that's great. But you know, am I going to go drop a million dollars on the, uh, the NBA championship game coming up? Probably not, you know, and because I know that's hey, that's, you know, we're even buying a lottery ticket. It doesn't even have to be sports, but you know, I, I kind of know that, okay, I know where my, I'm going to stay in my lane here, you know, and I'm going to, you know, if I can go out a little bit, get a win here, then maybe I might go for a little bit bigger here, but I don't, I'm not going to just throw myself out here and blow myself up and ruin everything I've done so far. But yeah, dude, and that's, that's the things you got to learn. And just, I mean, can you do that? Yeah. I was talking with somebody on here a couple of weeks ago who got into real estate development and he got his first, you know, six figure deal in a month, but then it took other people a year to get that or something. Mm-hmm. And it's just kind of, but he said, you know, it took me a little bit longer, but I was doing my research and knowledge. And now, I, you know, I kind of invested in it down the road. Now I'm making, you know, I forgot what he said, like 50 grand a month, which he could have just been blowing smoke up my ass. I don't know. But, mm-hmm. but still, it's just a lot of just doing your research, knowing your worth, knowing the risk, you know, and just assessing your value and assessing the outcomes. And, you know, and I, I just, that's always kind of, it might be me trying to say, I want to play it safe, but I think that's part of you. I want to play it safe just because I'm hesitant of going down a dark road. No, I love it because here's the thing. And as we know, we begin to smoke our own dope, we get in trouble. If we think we got to figure it out, listen, you got to make room for everyone. Yeah. Some people, some people say it's too risky and then we do. So uh, what I'm hearing you and I say, we're not here to say you guys are living the crazy style. No. We're just saying that our version of living looks like this. You guys go and live the way that excites you. And we're going to live like this. But I think the, the key thing is you, you begin to smoke your own dope. You begin to think you have it figured out and you're going to mm-hmm. prove to the world what is my friend. You're going to be in training to be loud in your ass and whoop ass. It's not yeah. going to be fun. Not, like not be pretty. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I'm, I'm a, I'm, I know we're getting cut short on time here right there, but I'm a firm believer in just, Hey, if you're not hurting yourself, if you're not hurting, hurting anybody else, go do whatever the hell you want to. I mean, love it. Yeah. Love it. Go do love it. it. But, love it. Uh, James, if, if uh, they got to get you out of here, watch that graduation. If people want to find you and get your <laughs> services and all that, if you want to plug anything, how do they do that? Yeah, that's awesome. That's awesome. You go to my website, www.jameshepner.com, J-A-M-E-S-H-E-P-P-N-E-R.com. There you're going to find uh, how to connect with me. If you want to jump on a discovery call, we're just going to have fun. We're going to play here the way Chris plays. We're going to play your style, whatever, whatever, whatever stimulates you, whatever, who you are as a person, we're going to play. So come and enjoy that. And of course, on the website, there's a link, my blog, to my podcast. You can find me anywhere on um, on podcast channels weekly the weekly or weekly wins and losses with james hepner and i want to invite each one of your guests to an experience an experience if you want to go directly to it go to www.weeklywinsandlosses.com so spell it out including the end weeklywinsandlosses.com and you're going to be entering a room with people from around the world where you get to observe people sharing a win and a loss and if you want to do the same and have an experience where you get to close off your week strong and be like, actually, to be honest, the loss of my life, if I let it exist and I don't turn to positive, I don't kick, I don't create future problems. I literally bring this together and I'd be like, listen, look at all the things people think that they're losing in the world. But however, look at the things we're gaining. So at the end, we're gaining everything. And, and friends, who doesn't want to step into a new week? Fresh, fresh, because you want to take new courageous action. Why? Because maybe you want to join. Chris and I, when we fly, maybe in five years, you want to hop on. So come and enjoy weekly wins and losses. Chris is, is a pleasure. I love being on with you, my friend. We'll do this again sometime. Thanks. That's badass, man. All right, folks, we're out here. Be good to yourselves. Take care. <laughs>